now, back to Access Tech Live. Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo with you today. Now, SD Lauder is in the news thanks to a recent partnership with Microsoft to create apps that harness AI to make makeup more accessible. Flora Bazier is a digital accessibility coach and had a great reaction when the news first came out. Flora, welcome. Hello. Go ahead. Oh, hi, everyone. How are you? How are you today? Thank you for joining us. It's so nice to have you because um, you posted an incredible video reaction uh, where this woman who was blind was putting on makeup and the app itself was literally directing her and telling her how much of her face was covered if she needed more, if she looked good. Um, before we even, even dive into that, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hi, everyone. I am super happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, my name is Flora Bezi. I am a bilingual digital accessibility expert, and I am a founder at Linora Tech. So my company helps uh, tech professionals as well as tech uh, leaders create more inclusive and accessible uh, experience for everyone and that include uh, people with visible or invisible disability. So basically we're making sure that technology or digital product like website application or document are accessible by all, by everyone. <laughs> I've got to say, I'm very excited about this myself, Flora, because, you know, I, I don't know if you can see me here, but uh, I certainly could achieve more with some makeup on my face and being able to do it accessibly would be quite nice. Um, so, you know, let's talk about the inclusivity part. This sounds like an obvious question, but it feels like it still needs to be asked, even in 2024. Why is it important for companies to be inclusive? That's a big question, and that's the best question that I would say usually get uh, a little bit more confusion for business owners because they feel like they don't have any client with a disability. So providing access or accessibility in digital product or in technology is actually helping and attracting many people, many clients, many consumers to products. So you were mentioning, for example, uh, there are people who are blind, and we are going to talk a little bit about that very soon. There are people who are deaf, they might not be able to hear. There are people with low vision, there are people with color blindness. So the reason why this is important is because when you make your digital product inclusive and accessible, you are attracting and retaining a larger market so it's really a good business decision <laughs> as a matter of fact the WHO the World Health Organization just stated that there are 1.3 billion people with a disability in the world in Canada there are 8 million in UK there are 16 million in our US, there are 42 million. So there are a lot of consumers and clients with a disability. And uh, all of them with uh, friends and family have a great buying power. I have heard from a survey that there are 13, 13 trillion dollars on the table. So you really wanna reach out to that market um, in order to provide experiences that everyone can use. <laughs> Laura, what was your reaction when you saw the Estee Lauder announcement? We're seeing, you know, this is a, some, you know, a, a, a sector, I think, of the world that's, you know, it's, makeup is in, incredibly large. Seeing the accessibility side meet something that's been around for so long, it's a new relationship for us. What was your reaction when you saw that? Oh, my goodness. When I saw the video, you probably have a segment of me dancing and reacting to that video. But Claire, um, she's a person, an influencer who uh, is blind, and she used the app and uh, just put on her makeup and checked that out. When I saw that, I was like, no way. This is a game changer. When I help leaders in business um, providing more inclusive experiences for everyone, they sometimes forget that this approach comes also with innovation. Because sometimes there are application or uh, technology that are not meant for everyone right now because they have a lot of limitation. But when you start thinking about inclusion, you innovate. And that's what Estee Lauder did. I was excited. Like, 
I am a woman. I always wear, well, not always, sometimes <laughs> I wear makeup. So I can actually relate with some of the people who need to put some makeup because some people who are blind got their blindness later on in life. So they probably were still wearing makeup before um, they become blind, so they still want to do that. So having that app is just tremendous. And some people were born blind, but they still love putting on makeup. So that's a win-win for everyone. <laughs> it's really important you, you mentioned that though, because you talked earlier about the, the financial side of this. And of course, we all hear about the, the purple dollar or whatever it is that you might call it, essentially the disability dollar and the value of that. And there's plenty of it to go around if companies would just realize it. But there is another side to this. And I've spoken to many disabled women over the years, especially who say, I want to put makeup on like everybody else. I, I think the problem can be that disability is medicalized so much that we see people as medical conditions rather than people themselves right so disabled people are seen that way so therefore the idea that someone who is blind or someone who is in a wheelchair would even want to put makeup on is almost a foreign idea in itself right oh that makes so much sense yes definitely i agree with you uh i think that uh and this is why uh often time think that having just the laws regulation and policies showing numbers you know does not always help. It's good. It's good for the foundation. It's good that it's there. But we need a little bit of coaching around inclusion and accessibility because really what needs to change is the culture, is the mindset. You were talking about, you know, a person who is blind, putting on makeup, and another person thinking that, why would you even do that? Um, one little story on the side that I've heard is that usually when we have images, sometimes also we like to describe and provide colors. And the reason why we do that oftentimes for people who are using a screen reader is because, again, to, your, to my point, some people get a disability later on in life. I often hear people say, uh, this is for people with disability. We don't have to worry about that. But everyone will have a disability at some point in life. We are all aging. And with aging comes, you know, Maybe we will lose some abilities, the ability to see, the ability to talk, to touch, and so much more. So these inclusive and accessible applications, solutions, are going to help everyone, including your future self. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many times have you heard this? I know I've heard it many times when I've talked to businesses, and I get the answer, oh, we don't have any disabled customers. We don't have a need to supply service or, or whatever it might be to a disabled person. Have you heard that as well? Oh gosh, I heard that all the time. They say, we don't have any disabled person or we don't have any disabled client. How will you know? Do you know that 70% exactly. of people with disability have actually an invisible disability? Okay, so that means simply you can see a person and assume that they have no disability, but in fact, they do have a disability. Some people are color blindness until you talk to them and ask them, they wouldn't tell you that they are color blind. So you might choose, you know, to convey some messages or convey some notification through color red or color green. It's not going to work for them. Some people have dyscalculia. I mean, there is autism. Sometimes disability are easy to see because they are visible. But again, too, there are a lot of people with invisible disability out there. So yes, actually, as I said before, the WHO, the World Health Organization said that there are one, one person in five or one person in six have a disability. So guess what, people? Even in your company, in your businesses, you already have employees with a disability. And you also have a lot of people with disability as part of your customers, friends, and even maybe partners. So when you say there is no, we don't have any client with a disability, think again. <laughs> yeah. Laura, do you find that technology is empowering companies to be more inclusive? I mean, you look at Estee Lauder, for example, it's a fairly, makeup is a fairly analog, you know, thing in life. To bring technology to it, you know, obviously takes innovation and a, a way to work it in. 
Definitely. I think that technology is one of the things that actually can create an empowering field for everyone. I have to be honest with you. I was born and raised in a small country called Burkina Faso. And uh, when I grew up, I had a beautiful chance to move from one place to another place. Actually, my father used to work at the WHO, the World Health Organization. So we moved to many places. And as this was beautiful, I also felt excluded at times because I didn't have the right skin color. I didn't speak like others in the culture, my reasoning, my pronunciation, my accent, everything. So I felt, I did fell in love with technology. Like I knew a website would not ask me, are you black before letting me, you know, browse uh, content from different country. So I loved it. And so what I have noticed moving forward, is during one of uh, an interview I had looking for a new job opportunity, someone has asked me, if you were blind and you were supposed to shop online, how will you go about it? And I was like, what? Exclusion already did not feel right for me from the get-go and I have no disability. But knowing that website of technology can actually exclude people didn't feel right. So with that in mind, I started going in the journey of helping and supporting more organizations to understand we can close the gap. If we cannot close the gap, guess what? We get an opportunity to innovate. So I think that really technology can help a lot of people have access and get better experiences. We're talking about people who have autism sometimes. They might be afraid or having anxiety to go to a certain place. But if you bring that place as a digital you know, world to people, they might actually feel comfortable understanding what they can expect from there. And I mean, there is a lot to unpack when it comes to technology. And I'm excited that, you know, companies like uh, Estee Lauder, a beauty company, a beauty brand company is actually, you know, creating something that is gonna be so impactful for everyone. Yeah, it is such a great thing. And, and like you say, online shopping, online experiences have really leveled the playing field for disabled people in the ability to be able to browse online, go shopping online without having that physical need to be in a store. And of course, that, that has many benefits to many people in the world, but certainly for, uh, for us as disabled people. Uh, look, Flora, you're a mum. Uh, we're coming up to Mother's Day. Anything you would like to be getting for Mother's Day? Anything technical, technological? For me, usually when it comes to technology, I mean, I do a lot of content uh, creation. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of application and tech things out there that will help. But if I have to be honest with you, something probably, um, maybe that's far pushing. <laughs> I would love to have the, you know, self-driving car. I know probably I'm not wow. going to get that for Mother's Day, but... <laughs> maybe not this Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe not this Mother's Day, but we'll, we'll work on that for you. I think we can <laughs> think we can make that happen. Flora, thank you for taking the time to join us. Thank you so much for having me. Goodbye. <laughs> when we come back, Mother's Day is around the corner, and we've got some ideas that are tech-inspired for your mom. So do stick around. It's our Mother's Day gift guide after a quick break here on Access Tech Live. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.